Hi, this is a review of the Victor VC3165 high resolution counter. It uh, handles 0.01 Hz to 2.4 GHz. Um, there are three different function settings right here. Um, setting number one goes from 50 megahertz to 2.4 gigahertz in uh, this connector right here. Function number two uses the A connector right here and is uh, recommended from 2 megahertz to 50 megahertz and function number three is also on A and that's recommended from 100 hertz to 2 gigahertz on AC coupling and 0.01 hertz to 100 hertz on DC coupling though I've never really used that. Um, in order to select this you just hit confirm and uh, now it goes ahead and confirms it. One thing I found that's interesting on this is that um, the higher up you have the function setting the more accurate the reading you have as long as it can function in that function setting. So, uh, for instance, right here we're at one kilohertz, and I have a relatively low gate time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set it to two kilohertz right now, and you can see the speed versus my uh, HP 5335A, which is also connected to uh, GPS disciplined oscillator that I'm running on it. So. Now I went ahead and I'm at 2 kilohertz and now this is also 2 kilohertz. I can increase its accuracy by also increasing its gate time. But now we're going to have to wait quite a while and increase the gate time on this as well. And um, now it's just a bit of a waiting game as the digits start creeping up. But that's kind of what its limit is. Um, with uh, with DC coupling. You can put the gate time all the way down but it doesn't really change uh, its accuracy. It just slows it down a little bit more. Uh, one irritating thing about the gate time on this is it doesn't display how much time it is. It says anywhere from like under one second to ten seconds max but I found that the max gate time is somewhere around here uh, on this one, so it doesn't really make a difference after that. Um, now, if you want to increase the amount of digits you have, you can increase your frequency. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this up to, let's say, 10,000 hertz. As you see, the update speed isn't quite amazing but it's pretty accurate it's actually more accurate than this is without the GPS DO let's go to 100 kilohertz let's zoom in on uh, this device here As you can see, it just now updated. That's that's how long the gate time is on it. That's it's pretty accurate. I mean, at 100 kilohertz, I mean, you're maybe what three parts per million off. Not too bad. Let's try. Speaking of million, let's try megahertz. Seems kind of typical of it. Perfect. And as you can see, it's it's reasonably accurate. Uh, at a megahertz, it's uh, about 2.1 hertz off. Yep. Let's try 5 megahertz. And then, if you want, we just do 10 megahertz.
you can actually, I've seen uh, this thing tracks accurately in the function 3 mode till about uh, 13 megahertz, somewhere in like at 13.5, 13.6 megahertz, it, the error percentage really starts getting out of hand. But the 2% that they claim, um, it, it, it's, it's definitely more accurate in, um, in a lower function as I'm going to demonstrate. So let's go right now to uh, 13 megahertz, which is as high as uh, I'd want to take this. And I have tested this um, at higher frequencies, but I just sold my RF signal generator so I can't produce um, signals that high anymore. If you see, the error right here is consistent with the lower errors. And um, yeah, it's not really bad at all. Let's go ahead now and um, set the function to the recommended range, which is 2 and look what happens to your accuracy. We'll give it a, a little bit of time for the for the digits to start populating and increasing but you can see all of a sudden now no matter what you do you're pretty much going to be missing a digit until you get to at least 100 megahertz. There's just nothing you can do about it in this other setting so as a result of that if you're at 13 megahertz or under, I would stick with uh, function number two. Well, on this particular unit, I don't know that all units are going to be accurate up to a little over 13 megahertz, but this one is. And as you see with the gate time, you know, I just put in the maximum gate time and it really doesn't help it. Um, one thing you're also able to do is you're also able to display not only the um, frequency but it's reciprocal we can display the period and that's your period in milliseconds so I guess on something like period it does help to be um, on a larger uh, function as they call it um, I can't really demonstrate uh, number one, because I don't, I'm, I'm not able to push high enough frequencies. One thing I'm able to demonstrate, though, is let's see. Um, I'm going to do this. Let me change the amplitude on my function generator. Let's zoom out again for this, um, just so you can see the oscilloscope. Hopefully you can see the oscilloscope. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and lower the amplitude. Let's go ahead and change it to... Frequency here. And as you see, all of a sudden, my HP 5335A is no longer reading frequencies. This thing is happily chugging along. Uh, and as you see, the, the amplitude is obviously less. Uh, now I could sit here and fiddle with the trigger until it once again reads. Or I can do auto triggering, but uh, I find it more beneficial to have manual triggering on this particular device. That being said, this is an easy to use device. It's uh, more accurate than uh, any oscilloscope that I have, including the LaCroix, which is definitely more accurate than the Agilent. And um, yeah, it's a recommended unit for its price and its size. Um, there are uh, Agilent units that are the same form factor as my function generator, but those cost you know, upwards of four, five, six hundred dollars more. So, you know, for the price uh, and the size and the accuracy without having to feed it an external source, I think this is a great buy and um, it does uh, does a 
wide range of frequencies. This one only goes to 225 megahertz. So uh, this one being able to go to 2.4 gigahertz, it's quite a winner.